First guest this morning was appointed as Housing Minister early this summer, taking up the mantle of what many would describe as one of the country's toughest ministries. And here to talk to me about his plans uh, as Housing Minister and some of the new policies he's introducing is Dara O'Brien. Dara, you're very welcome to the Home Show. Thank you very much, Sinead. Good morning. Good morning. Now, tell me more about, you have a proposal, Bill, I suppose housing is one of those things that was front and centre yes. for years and years and years and years and years. We, we could not see the wood for the trees on mm-hmm. housing and then whack, along comes COVID and, yes. you know, to some extent chucks it into limbo and mm-hmm. you know, there was a, a sense that there was a lot of things as emergency measures were finally yeah. sorting out things mm-hmm. that maybe should have been done as, you know, I, 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 over the last few years. Now, one of the changes you're bringing in is is under the affordable housing yes. scheme and it's really about how young couples in the main uh, mm-hmm. can can buy a home based on on average salaries yeah. or, or slightly lower salaries. Tell us a little bit about what you're yeah. planning. Look, I suppose firstly just to say COVID does provoke, and you're right, it, it provides a serious challenge for the construction sector and just really briefly is what we're looking at. We were looking at earlier this year pre-COVID probably the, the sector would build 25,000 homes in Ireland. That reduced, it was projected to be reduced to less than 14,000. That just shows you, you know, the, the challenge ahead. Now, it now looks that that will probably be in the region of 16,000, which is good news because it's been been stronger kind of, um, you, you know, push towards the first-time buyers. We increased the help to buy grant to 30,000 in the July stimulus, and that's helped some people get in the ladder. But to get to your specific point, yeah, affordable housing for working people has always been a priority for me. Big issue in the general election. Probably didn't get as much prominence as it should have done. Like There's a whole load of people out there, couples and singles, because I'm not excluding singles from the scheme that that I'm I'm working on, who are either renting and paying really high rents, saving every extra cent they have, and still cannot save enough money or get a mortgage that would actually allow them to own their own home. And I actually believe in home ownership, and I think it's a just and honest and noble aspiration to have. Every survey that's done, by the way, uh, home ownership comes up for people as the preferred uh, type of housing tenure. We do need a a proper rental system. I'll talk about that in in a second. So what my my work has been over the last 70, 71 days since taking over as as Minister for Housing is actually to try to put uh, uh, flesh on the bones of an affordable housing scheme that will work for first-time buyers. Uh, And I'm well advanced on that work, I obviously have to get that past cabinet and to to deal with colleagues on it. But like we would be looking at, I've looked at what what's been done well in other countries, what's been done well in Ireland in the past. Like we did have affordable housing here in Ireland before, but sixteen thousand uh, families were housed through it in the in the late nineties, early two thousands. Mostly that worked out well. There were there some areas of it uh, would need to be changed. So it is a priority. I want to give hope to people that they know that they're going to be able to own a home at a reasonable rate with a focus not just on on uh, on private housing developments, but looking at our public land too. I've often said it that we should be building public housing on public land that includes affordable housing. That will happen, but that's going to take time for that to come through. So that's why I'm trying to add some urgency to it by bringing forward a national affordable purchase scheme. Yeah. Now, uh, just in terms of the details of what's sure. involved, I know you're talking about increasing the uh, salary levels to, I think, around 90,000 because that's what yeah. it costs uh, to pay back a mortgage mm-hmm. on things. But you're also uh, referencing a shared equity option yeah. in it. How will that work in practice? Who, okay. who do they share the equity with? First thing, I saw the, the I, I saw the report on the ninety thousand cap. I think salary caps are arbitrary. Um, the previous scheme and a scheme published actually by Sinn Fein had a cap of seventy five thousand per couple. That would actually exclude over fifty percent of the people, based on our research, that are actually looking for affordable housing. So I think they're too arbitrary. The definition of affordability should really be around net income. So if if your mortgage payment or your rent is over thirty five percent of your take of your net take home pay internationally, that's actually seen as it starts to be become unaffordable. So the shared equity model now, and we haven't decided on this, and I'm just cautious about what I say because we're still working through it, and I need, obviously, the, the support of colleagues in government. But it ha- is very much this. I've 
that the, the state will take an equity share in a house. So you you would buy and um, you know a, a portion of the house. The state would take a portion of the house, and it's an investment by the house by the state in your home. And that in future can be can be uh, bought back or not, uh, or if the house was sold, would be paid back at that stage, or the state would just retain it. And that means that you're servicing basically the mortgage that you got on the portion of the house that you're buying, and there, that there could be uh, low interest or no interest uh, servicing of of the other state part. We haven't settled on that piece yet. Mm-hmm. There's still a lot of work to be done there. But there are models, if you look at other countries, that work very well uh, with this. And it means that people who are paying, you know, 17, 18, 1900 euro in rent right now will be paying mortgages of about 1000 euro a month. Indeed. Now, I'm and just that's wondering, a big though, deal for people, I, you know? Yeah, no, it is. And I, and I get I get the kind of the, the financial side of it. But I, I'm concerned, Minister, and I wonder whether the banks would be concerned at having two owners on the same property. I mean, what happens if the couple well, goes into arrears, maybe due to something like COVID or COVID, mm-hmm. or they lose their job and they end up in the MAR process, and suddenly well, the government is saying, no, hold on a second, we're, we're, we own part of this. Sure, house. sure. Well, look, all those elements are being worked through at the moment. And obviously, you know, we've got to work through with financial institutions and with the state. I suppose to give you one example of how things are working through COVID. The one mortgage that I'm responsible for as, as housing minister right now is the Rebuilding Ireland Home Loan, which is, which is a really good product, a 20 or 25 year fixed rate mortgage, uh, you know, at, at, a, at a very, very keen rate. OK, like we've been able to manage that here with people who've lost their jobs because of COVID of giving mortgage holidays on that money without any servicing cost and without any interest on it. So those are the things we would work through. But obviously, the, the sector, you know, and whatever plan we come forward, we will have to work with the, with the sector on that to make sure that the, the terms of it are workable uh, and that, that any downsides to it are minimised greatly. I think the, the priority, though, Sinead, is, and um, for, for your listeners who are in this, this trap, of people paying rent that and not being able to save the, the required amount for mm. their deposit and feeling that they're never actually going to own a home. And we can do this affordably. It's been done in other jurisdictions. It's been done in Ireland before. And uh, I'm quite confident, and there's certainly a will within government, there's a commitment in the programme for government agreed with ourselves and Fianna Fáil, the Greens and Fine Gael, that we would introduce an affordable uh, purchase scheme. And we're going to do that. Yeah, and okay. A lot of work is, 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 is a foot on it. So a lot okay. of the detail has to be worked mm. through too, and we're still doing that. Okay. Well, the difference, of course, with the Rebuilding Ireland home loan is that the loans are not given by by banks, by mainstream lenders. In other words, they're subprime. They have to be refused by two banks to get it. So they're given Mm -hmm. out by local authorities. So it's very easy to say to people, listen, don't you worry if you don't pay because we've got the taxpayer over here kind of supporting that. But in terms of the help to buy scheme, you're saying people can't get their deposit together. They can't afford houses. But in fact... 40% 40% of the people who availed of the very generous help to buy scheme uh, already had the full deposit saved. Only 80, they only needed 85% of the loan to value. Yeah. So, it, and now you've increased it for, to 30,000. We increased it in the July stimulus just, it up to the end of, just up to the end of this year, Sinead. I think it, you'll find needed, with, Minister? with people who are, who, are, who are fortunate enough to, to be able to to save it has been a real help for first-time buyers. It's a, it's a crude instrument, I'd agree with you. It's it free is, money. It, it, yeah, and, and it's expensive, okay? But but what it has done, if you look at last year, with over 4,500 first-time buyers were actually able to get their foot on the ladder, and it helped all of them uh, to different degrees. But what we need to do, and what my priority as Housing Minister, is to bring affordability into the market, not just on, on affordable purchase, but also affordable rental. And for about the last 18 months, there'd been an expert group working within this department, you know, bringing forward options on affordable rental. And when I came in here in, as, as minister, I asked them to conclude that work. So we're, we're, you know, before the end of this year as well, that we will have, you know, for the first time, a national affordable rental scheme so people will know what it looks like. Mm-hmm. Previous governments had, had spoken about that. We had right back to Alan Kelly announced in a, a, the cost rental scheme in Enniscary in, in 2015. That scheme's not finished yet. And what, what people want to see is actual delivery now. Uh, we know what policies need to be pursued, to be fair. But people do want to see delivery. And I think state-owned land has a big role in that too, uh, through what, what's called the Service Sites Fund. But again, that's been very slow. It's a good, it's a good concept, you know, that the local authorities, and that is a shared equity uh, arrangement too, that the local authorities effectively subsume the cost of the land. I give uh, through the department, on average, about €50,000 per unit in the state 
takes an equity stake in those those homes. So some of those homes are going to come on stream next mm-hmm. year, Boer Boy in Cork, Dunima in Lusk, but not enough, okay? And, like, mm-hmm. we do have an opportunity uh, through COVID now to invest in, in housing, invest in infrastructure, and that's something that, that, that should be done that, and that we need. Um, and people want to see progress in, in, in housing. And I haven't even touched on probably the most important aspect of, of that is, is tackling the homeless uh, situation that we have here in Ireland. And that's why Indeed. within a couple of weeks of me taking over, I put out a call, uh, a call for housing to give more money to local authorities to buy vacant properties that are there, particularly focusing on singles, because 70% of our adults that are homeless are single people. Yes. And a lot of people have been homeless for far oh, too long. Okay. So there's a big focus with, from me in my department of a, of a housing delivery unit and of a homeless uh, a group that sit every single Monday morning at 8 o'clock with all the stakeholders to see on a daily basis what we can do to improve okay. things. Now, and I believe course, we can. And there's an emphasis on doing that. Okay. And, and you know, th- that and the financial side of a shared equity scheme are very laudable policies and I think they'll probably be welcome across the board. However, sure. they are dependent on developers wanting to build houses and the Chartered Surveyors Report, which was just out earlier this year, has pitched it at 470000 is the average uh, build cost of an urban medium two rise. Now that's mm. just a category two, two bedroom apartment, which is by no means uh, the, the most expensive. Somewhere yeah. in the Docklands, up to 578,000 sure. uh, at the higher level. That's 10 times somebody's Massive salary. Issue. It yeah. doesn't make commercial sense for a developer to build at those levels. What are you going to do to uh, incentivize them, encourage them, or force them to do so. Well, I think I, I think look, there's a couple of things you, you've you've outlined, particularly the issue with costs for building apartments. Okay, and that is very true. Like we've a lot of permissions granted for apartments that haven't been actioned uh, because they can't be built. Okay, but I think the state. I've always believed needs to play a role in in the market and needs to lead by example. Now, any incentives, as, as you ask, or things like that, you would be loath to bring in any incentives that aren't going to have a benefit to the end to to the end customer, i.e., the the, the, the homeowner. And um, so, there are elements that we will look at, so and we will look they? at what we what we can do in that space but, but between say, now between now and the budget. Yeah, but, but you say but you're going are, to look at it. There are certain costing land in certain certainly in Dublin and in the city is still overvalued. Um, most would say it's overvalued to the tune of about 35%. So we do have, though, having said that, enough to get going with ourselves right now. Um, you know, we're looking at only probably about 16,000 house completions this year. Yeah, there will be a predominance of uh, of houses within that as, as opposed to apartments. But it is an issue that we're going to have to grapple yeah. with and that I am grappling with. That's like less it's than half bit- of what's required. Sorry, Sinead, I missed that. That's less than half of what's required. I mean, if developers oh, yes. are saying to you, Minister, it's all very well, put in the money, let people afford it, mm-hmm. make sure they can buy their mortgages, but we're not building because it is not affordable for us to do so. I mean, VAT, the average VAT on a two-bed apartment is 43000 Yeah, euros. and look, again, the, that is true, but... I, I firmly believe that some of the measures that, I, that that government will take over the coming weeks and months will actually have a very positive impact in in that space. Okay, and uh, I'm happy to talk about more of that as we as we get to the budget as well. We have to have a viable construction sector. It supports a lot of jobs. We need people in in that sector who are going to be able to build and are going to be able to deliver homes at an affordable rate. And the state has a role in that. And some of the measures that I intend to bring forward as housing minister will help in that space. Uh, will it solve it overnight? No, it won't. You rightly said we're only completing 16,000 this mm. year. A lot of that is due to COVID, to be fair. But that is way below what uh, Ronan Lyons in a recent report wrote as well and others, that there's some say we need up to 40, 45,000 homes, which include apartments uh, per year. We have a big role for approved housing bodies, many of which are part of my housing delivery group as well, doing really good work like the Respawns and the Tours and Oakleys and, and, and uh, those housing bodies. So Indeed. There's different ways of, of uh, there's a lot of different pieces to this jigsaw okay. puzzle. And, and we have but, had we have had a number of those housing bodies on on the show. And indeed, Minister, yes. we will have you also on the show again. I very mm. much hope, and you can yeah, uh, update thanks, us man. on what's going ahead. Uh, Darrow Bryan, uh, Minister for Housing, thanks for joining us on the Home Show.